Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks. My name is Jessica Lisi, and I am the Partnerships and Events Manager here at DASA. And today, I'm excited to welcome you to the second episode of our Platform Engineering mini-series, Measuring and Communicating Value Realization. I am delighted to introduce to you our speaker for today's episode. I would like to welcome Swarna Mani uh, to the stage. Swarna is the Director of Platform Engineering at Rhythm, and we are excited to have her here today. Swarna, I give the floor to you. Thanks, Jess. Hi, everyone. Um, th thanks for you know, being here, and thanks, Jess, for giving me an opportunity to talk about one of our uh, most treasured topics in platform engineering. Um, I'm Swarna Mani, and today I'll be talking about measuring and communicating value realization. Uh, before we jump on to slides, uh, let me just take a minute to introduce myself. Um, I am the Director of Platform Engineering in Rhythm. Rhythm is one of e-commerce leaders, helping, helping suppliers and retailers and also cha channel consumers to come together seamlessly using a SaaS e-commerce platform. Uh, I'm the Director of Platform Engineering there, uh, working with all the development IT infosec to bring together a platform engineering transformation and how we can help them get to the next step in infrastructure modernization and speed. So with that, let's go to the topic. Measuring and communicating platform engineering uh, values or you know, metrics, it's an interesting topic. It's very similar to you know, consider yourself as a builder and you want to build a community and then sell it. For that, these are the three steps you'll do. You want to understand what is going to sell in that community, scope basically, then build it, then sell it. Measuring platform uh, engineering values or outcomes are very similar to that. You need to lay the groundwork, track the outcomes, and tell the story. Shall we get to it? What is laying the groundwork means? It means <clears throat> understanding what you bring as a value to the company. Uh, why I'm stressing this point is platform engineering is an internal facing team. Most of the places it's inter internal facing team and your customers are product development, infosec, IT, support, whatever it is based on how your charter is defined. So you need to understand your charter and understand your scope to measure the outcomes of your team or you know the value you bring to the company. What does that mean? In some companies, platform engineering can take the traditional sense of building the infrastructure, SRE, reliability engineering, developer productivity and stuff. In some company, it can be just developer experience, while there are other companies where platform engineering is all about creating generic services, microservices, and helping developers get their product to the market fast. So First and foremost, understand your charter. What does your team do? What does your team doesn't do? And then define the scope. Once you have that, the next step is goal alignment. When I mean goal alignment here, I'm talking about two kinds of goal alignments. The first one is with your stakeholders who are going to adopt or use your products or use your technology. The second thing is goal alignment with business objectives. It is not enough as a platform engineering team to just you know work internally. You need to understand how each and everything that you do is eventually helping your business objectives. That is how you can make a strong you know, um, argument that whatever you are doing is helping the company. So always have your goals aligned with stakeholders and also aligned with the business objectives. Once you have this in place, then time to bring your team together. Whatever you are going to measure, your team need to understand why you are doing it and need to build and you know, produce outcomes so that you can measure effectively. So have your team prepared for your ideation, for your strategy, so you are all now aligned to go to the next step. Then plan. Plan is where like you, know, you plan how you are going to build, how you are going to deliver, how, and how you are going to tell the story. Every company has their own planning cadence. It can be sprint plan, it can be quarterly plan, it can be yearly plan. Plan it in a way where your definition of done or the success criteria also has measurement baked in. And also, you know, educate your stakeholders or, you know, communicate to your stakeholder about your plan, your team about your plan. So that's what I mean by align plan, plan, and then align. 
these are the major steps in laying the groundwork or basically as i said originally if you are a builder scoping the community on what is going to sell and how you are going to prepare for yourself so next let's go to the next slide which is actually the building or tracking the outcomes this again as i said going to change based on what kind of team you are what kind of platform engineering you are so once you have planned you know what you are going to measure now time to measure monitor it monitor it measure it there are multiple ways to measure you can measure using totally return on investment or kpis or both or it can be more like you know um, detailed metrics depends on your team you are going to monitor and measure for example let's say that you are going the roi path very common return on investment items in platform engineering or cost optimization developer productivity uh, you know developer speed um, in reliability of the system like number of incidents so you can have those as like return on investment and then you need to measure how your work is bringing the return of investment always make sure that it is transparent whatever you are measuring should be transparent as i said you set the stage in the planning stage where you are going to say how your projects or your ideation or your work is going to be measured in a definition of done so you are keeping the set transparent so what you are measuring can be checked by stakeholder and they can give feedback saying that this is really of great value to us but this item is not going to be make a much value so you can go back you can tweak it and also when you are measuring see if you can show the improvement for example let's say developer productivity your bills have been taking 4 hours and your project or the performance during that your team is doing is going to bring it down to 3 hours that's an improvement that is the kind of measurement that can be sold pretty effectively and can make an impact so when you monitor and measure always look for how you can keep it transparent how you can take a continuous feedback loop from your internal team as well as stakeholders and also how you can show the improvement when you need to adjust the strategies adjust the strategies measurement and monitoring for a platform engineering is not set in stone your team as a platform engineering is going to continuously change you need to adapt to the latest and greatest technologies your company's outcomes your business objectives likewise you also need to continuously change the measurement or the monitoring model so that it is impactful now that you have defined you have measured <clears throat> time to tell the story also called as sell your buildings how are you going to do that you have everything but you need to make sure that everyone who need to know about the value that you are bringing to the table knows what you are bringing platform engineering teams are unique in their own way because they are their own marketing own sales team so you need to understand what are the platforms where you can tell the story it also depends on your company structure whether it's a remote it's a hybrid or it's an on site company in a remote company it can be slack it can be whatever documentation like confluence notion that you use it can be emails it can be zoom workshops in a in person company people may prefer conference room or in person workshops so find the platform it i have mentioned it specifically platforms here because it may not be just one thing you may need to float your outcome in multiple areas it can be a slack newsletter it can be an email newsletter it can be an announcement in you know engineering monthly or technical uh, call whatever it is so find all the platforms and then communicate effectively what does communicate effectively mean here don't keep it too much technical because all aspects of people are going to come here and you want everyone to understand the value you are going to come bring it to the table for example if you have done something that's going to increase developer productivity and developer productivity is the roi that you are tracking you need to communicate effectively saying that originally whenever like a developer developed a code it took this many days to you know deploy now because of our improvements instead of 3 days we can deploy it one day that is something everyone can understand so communicate effectively tell a story so everyone can connect the dots understand and how you are bringing this value to the company and wherever possible 
go all the way till the business end to see how business can get value from what you're building internally. And whatever you're doing, don't keep it like a one-time thing. Give a regular cadence, monthly, quarterly, um, weekly, whatever floats for your ecosystem. Have the regular ca cadence like where you can continuously measure and continuously give out or you know tell the story about the values that you're bringing to the company. Always make sure to connect the values, which, which is basically the return on investment or KPA or raw metrics to goals, objectives, and link everything together so that you know it can make an impactful um, presentation to whomever you are, they are listening to. And also like it makes an impact on how you can continuously sell your team out there. Um, platform engineering are very much building blocks or infrastructure foundational uh, pieces for many companies. And we continuously work in the background to keep the you know wheels well greased and the machine operates smoothly. So we need to make sure that everyone understands that uh, in many companies, it so happens unless the system stops, they don't even know the platform engineering company is operating behind, but it's not enough you operate in the back. You need to market, you need to tell the story, you need to make everyone understand that what you are bringing to the table. And that way you can make your team more powerful and more impactful. Thanks for hearing me out. Um, that's it. Those are like the basic things that I want to talk about measurement and communication of platform engineering metrics. Uh, with that, I'll give it to Jess. Jess. Wow. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Swarna, for your incredible insights on just the importance of platform engineering teams being able to communicate their value and impact to the organization. Um, I, I think you gave a really great overview and I wanted to actually ask a question. Um, can you actually, could you give an example of how you saw this discrepancy in communication, maybe in your own, own organization or another organization you worked in? And um, can you just kind of tell us a story of how you came to this, maybe how you identified these issues and how you impl implemented all these great strategies you just, you shared with us? Thank you. That's a great question. Um, it's, it's a growing thing. I'm also continuously, um, you know, recalculating my strategies, but we are a remote company. So as I mentioned, um, I had to continuously identify various platforms. I started with a couple of platforms and I felt that the reach was not enough. So these days um, we share our wins. We do like a quarterly showcase, like where we bring people and, you know, give the demo. Uh, we also make sure that in the planning, we give like our ideation on what we are trying to do and how it is going to, going to really help our customers or the stakeholders. And, um, as I said, like, you know, uh, I've been um, trying to measure in during the planning and then as and when the project happens, sharing the wins. And we also have like weekly updates where like all the leaders come together. I try to share it there. And then uh, we also have uh, open houses and demos to show like, you know, how they can bring value, how they can get value out of our products or the automations that we are doing. So those are some things that I have. Uh, done already and uh, we also have started like a weekly newsletter where we are republishing things on what we did so that you know uh, anyone who missed it or anyone uh, was not aware of it newly joined the company can still get acquainted to it also one thing which i find um, is very critical is to make it easily searchable or to make it easily known like these are the things that platform engineering is giving to you, do you know that, creating that kind of a platform. So those are like some things that have uh, rolled out already. I'm seeing it is having more reach and I'm still continuously researching what more I can do to have like even more reach. So yeah, that's my story here. That's incredible. Oh my gosh. And that that only shows um, the, you know, the, we're seeing a lot of that when it comes to remote teams, more and more companies are doing this or they're uh, distributed over different geographies. So I think that uh, especially as we can continue to do that, because uh, I don't see that going away anytime soon, it's important to really be able to be the champion of yourself and of your team, um, especially when you don't get those little, uh, those moments where maybe you can talk about it at lunch or yeah. um, in person. So that's even more, you know, important. Yeah. <laughs> Putting it out there, making sure that, you know, something they will see and they'll come across this is important. <laughs> 
So oh, yeah, gosh. all kind of marketing strategies really help. That's amazing. It just shows that kind of um that overlap between a lot of these different uh mm -hmm. skill sets and also, you know, those departments. Uh and that actually got me to an brought me to another question. So um you know, you mentioned one thing that really stood out to me was the importance of, you know, aligning your goals, the platform engineering goals to the goals and the needs of the um, of the customers and stakeholders. And we we look at that as experience management. So so manage, making sure that you're managing the experience of those who are using using your tools, whether that's internally, like your internal stakeholders or your customers or your external stakeholders. And how, can you tell us how you actually can bridge that gap between platform engineering and experience management and ex even experience management teams? So one thing I have to say is that, um, I mean, I have been in this platform side of things for about like close to seven years. And what I've seen is getting a seat at the table is the most important thing. And uh, I have that opportunity in rhythm. I do the planning cadence very similar to the engineering teams with, along with the product managers uh, and we all present to each other. So getting a seat at the table is important because that's when you are hearing your stakeholders what they are doing. And also usually the planning goes multiple version. It's when you can really align with your stakeholders. Um, it's something I'm still growing into, uh, but I would say that I have, have come to a place like where I much better understand what I need to do so I can align with the stakeholders. So what I would say here is getting the seat at the table, planning very similar to your stakeholders so that, you know, they, you are all aligned and making sure that you present to each other and, you know, be there for their presentation so you can bridge the gap is going to be extremely important. And also uh, understanding the business roadmap and business KPIs is going to be vital because, uh, I mean, like you may be one of the most infrastructurally modernized platform engineering, but whatever you are bringing, if it is like too far out in the game for development team or, you know, totally not going to be needed for where your business trajectory is going, you're not going to bring a value. So understanding the business roadmap, making sure that you get a seat at the table and planning in alignment with your stakeholder are the three things that I would say are going to be very critical to, you know, uh, get into the measurement of things. Definitely, definitely making sure you get that seat at the table and, and always having that consistent communication between your stakeholders and, and the platform yeah. engineering team. And I know you mentioned roadmap, um, and I'm going to get to the, some of the great questions that were just posted uh, in a moment. But uh, when we look at roadmaps and we discuss this um, in terms of build, you know, building your capabilities uh, and your transformation, a big... Mm -hmm. Um, important part of having that building that roadmap is your plat, um, portfolio management team. Yes. So do you see uh, how do you get to collaborate with your portfolio management team? Do you get do you see a lot of that? Um, what are some key insights? From that? We are like pretty much like extremely transparent in rhythm uh, because we are a remote company. And as I said, like I'm very lucky to have seat at the table on all the important meetings. I am part of all engineering presentations. I'm part of engineering planning. Um, as far as roadmap is concerned, uh, as I said, it's transparent and we have like a very clear view into the roadmap and also uh, from platform engineering perspective, um, last two years I've been trying to do kind of like a yearly roadmap. Uh, we will start with definitely like all the tech debts and our ideation and then we will pull in the stakeholder records and what makes sense and, you know, prioritize it accordingly. Um, so when you, when you mean... Uh, I mean, every company calls it differently. And uh, in uh, in my company, uh, the roadmap is pretty visible to us. Um, we have we know the vision. We know where the company is going. What are all like our like top three things at any point of time? Uh, and we also have like business goals and objectives defined. So every uh, development team aligns with that, and we platform engineering aligns with the development teams and other stakeholders. So it's like automatic alignment kind of happens. That's how like uh, the whole thing happens in rhythm. Um, so I, I think, uh, transparency makes it super easy for me here. Yeah. That's incredible. It just shows how, when you want to build, you know, whether you're trans building your capability, your platform engineering capabilities or, or a full on tra digital transformation for your organization, you need a lot of collaboration with other teams. You need transparency. You need, 
um, strong portfolio management teams. You need a strong platform engineering team. So I really like seeing this, um, just all these different connections and, and the collaborate, collaborative um, effort, which goes into this uh, explaining, you know, yourself. Yeah, one thing, one thing definitely I can say is um, don't let as it comes kind of model for platform engineering. Uh, platform engineering is not operations. Uh, it's mm -hmm. very much different. So having a vision or having like, I mean, it will continuously change, but having a roadmap for yourself, a yearly roadmap can give motivation to your team uh, and can give like a clear idea of what you planned, how it's changing, what you need to do and whether like how much of, that is another measurement actually, how much of items that you planned you are able to get and how much of a drift happened. Uh, yeah. Understanding this drift can really help you to rescope and you know have your charter done in a way where you can be more impactful. So yeah. Incredible. Oh my gosh. Well, now I want to, because I'm hogging all the questions, I want to turn to some of the great questions we got from um our viewers. So this is from uh Gabriel and oh, it's not showing his his face, but uh he goes, Hi, thank you for sharing your experience. You mentioned the need to define outcomes and align the team's deliverables with the goals of the business stakeholders. You also mentioned uh, the definition of done, DOD, and the improvements mm -hmm. in productivity, speeding up deliveries, more frequent deliveries, et cetera. I wanted to know a bit more about these, uh, these topics that you touched. So how do you measure impact? Specifically, how do you map the team's activities and the business impact? And how can we measure the uh, ROI of having more frequent deliveries? Okay. Uh, that's a that's a great thing, um, great question, and it is something tackled by most of the platform engineering. I think uh, no matter the charter, uh, developer experience kind of comes into many of the platform engineering, and this is what we do. I mean, as I said, it is again going to change based on your landscape. Um, I can just give like one specific example. Um, we took over like a regression framework, and we did like a lot of tune up uh, to increase the performance of regression framework. So our goal was you know, uh, improve the regression framework. And uh, how the ROI was developer productivity. I My ROIs are pretty uh, standard ROI, which where I can measure like multiple metrics under the ROI. For example, one of my ROIs is developer productivity. And I think this is common against more platform engineering. And the definition of done was increase the uh, performance of regression framework so that the build times reduce significantly. That was the definition of done. And how did I measure it? Very simple. We just measured the build time here, um, which we were able to bring down like uh, quite significantly. And we just gave the delta. We we ran it before the work that we did, and we ran it after the work we did. Measured the you know delta, and we shared it with the development team. That is like one concrete example I can share. I cannot go into details because of various. Uh, ND and stuff, but I think this is um, this is how I define. And as I said, um, I keep my ROI uh, very aligned with platform engineering buckets, and uh, I keep it a little bit of loose so that I can measure multiple metrics under that. For example, under developer productivity, uh, I can also measure um, number of incidents. If you are going to ask like how number of incidents can come under developer productivity it is going to affect developer productivity because the lesser the incidents, the more the you know, development time. Incidents suck up a lot of people and it needs a lot of people to jump in, triage and you know bring it out and also patching, that kind of a thing. So you can fold multiple things into that one ROI called as developer productivity. One item, if you're asking how you are going to you know, connect it to the business goals, uh, the business goals is customer satisfaction. Um, customer customers are going to satis going to be satisfied if I give development more ability to you know deliver features frequently and also to have less instance. So that's how like I connect my developer productivity to the business objective of customer satisfaction. So it is going to again change with your landscape and how your teams are formed. But this is like one example. Hope that helps. Excellent. Thank you so much. That was such a really detailed response. Um, and I think it really broke down a lot of the key things you you talked about. Uh, we have a couple more questions. Um, yeah. We have one from Sukbeer and Sukbeer asks, uh, where do you typically hire 
for the platform teams that you build and what skills do you look for? Um, it depends on the charter. Um, my current platform engineering organization has multiple teams uh, starting from infrastructure networking all the way to shared services. So I have like, um, you know, a group of people who are like great problem solvers in the realm of infrastructure, reliability, but also software developers. Um, I think we are just, you know, are lucky to have a great set of recruiters. Uh, my main job is to put an effective job description and, uh, you know, work with my leads to prepare like a great interview model. Once we do that, um, we explain to recruiters what we want. We are looking for uh, problem solvers. We don't go into like extreme detail. We try to understand the position and we, we, we take three things very seriously. The first thing is, of course, you know, team fit. The second thing is problem solving. Uh, any platform engineering candidate should be very, very, very uh, good in problem solving, quick to think on their feet. So we do some kind of like troubleshooting system design, that kind of a thing. And then based on the role, we go into deep, like, you know, infrastructure means it can be an IAC, software development means it can be a software development thing. So three things, basically team fit, problem solving, and very specific to the team role. Those are like how we define. And once we define, we give it to the recruiters. And we usually have had like a good candidate reception once we have like a very clear job description, because as I said, our title can be misleading in platform engineering. Um, so having a very clear software, sorry, job description is going to be powerful here to get the right candidate. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, I definitely trying to find that that fit, that charter fit is so important. And you mentioned just that defining the charter is going to be the first step in the going to have probably the biggest impact. You need to sell the job. You know, if you if you have like a software team inside platform engineering, you need to sell the job to the software engineers on why it will be more interesting than regular software development. So, yeah, again, selling comes into picture there. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you. Well, we have one last question. We have time for one last question. And this goes, uh, comes from uh, Koshik. Uh, Koshik asks, are there any shared values between platform engineering and platform operations? Um, yeah, I mean, the shared value would be how to speed up things. One, uh, how to help the stakeholders, you know, uh, move fast. Uh, whether it's operations or platform engineering, uh, one thing that is kind of like I have done my share of operations as well. So I think I have some background in answering this. You need to understand what is repeatedly happening and try to automate it or uh, do whatever changes that's needed, whether it is from operations end or engineering end, to not to, you know, manually do the repeated tasks again. So that, you know, um, insight into repeated work and how you can make it more automated is how actually platform operations evolve into platform engineering. Any platform operations can evolve into platform engineering by just starting there. And um, that's where I would start as well. And um, reduction of incidents, it's going to be very, very important for both the sector of platform. Excellent. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I want to say a couple of questions. Actually, more questions came in. If you uh, have some time, I, I can ask. Yeah, I have, have a couple more I minutes. Time. Let's go for it. Yeah. Awesome. Because I'm so excited to see this. There's a lot of great conversation in the um, in the comments. So thank you all for these these great questions. So we have um, a question from uh, Anirban. And Anirban asks, what are the key challenges that you have faced while defining KPIs and measuring against them? So first and foremost, I had to understand what I do and what I won't do uh, because that is what charter means. Um, contrary to what people think, charter actually helps every team to move fast because then you won't have this waiting game or in a black hole that is created by, hey, they will do it. Hey, they will do it, that kind of a thing. By doing a clear charter and uh, saying that what you will do, what you won't do, is going to be important and that's a challenge it's not easy sometimes there are like overlapping uh you know work for example in my company we work extremely close with 
uh, IT, InfoSec, and also product development and also support. And I need to know what my team will do, what they will do. And there need to be like a very clear understanding of this charter definition. That is the most challenging part because the charter is what that feeds the definition of ROI or KPI. If you don't understand what you do, what you will not do, you cannot define it clearly. That's the first challenge. And I overcame that by just writing it down and working with my stakeholders. And also, I constantly tweak my charter. It, it needs to happen. That's how the game is. Because something new, your company is branching into a new area. And there is like a new team form. You are going to support the team. Again, you need to you know, extend your charter where you know like this is how you are going to do. And you may need to bring in a new ROI or KPI for that branch. So charter, continuous working on charter is the first thing, challenging. But if you overcome it, first step is done. The second thing on defining the ROI or KPI again is, as I said, it needs to be transparent and a continuous feedback loop. You start with something, you, you do it, the iteration, and you, tra you transparently share it. It may be receptive or it may not be receptive. You need to be open to feedback and you need to go back to the drawing board and change it if needed. Uh, one thing, as I said, that's one of the reasons I have kept my ROIs at a business level, uh, which can in turn, you know, help you um, measure like concrete metrics and, you know, uh, go up to the ROI. So those are like some things I have done to, you know, uh, um, to measure this. As I said, like I am also trying these things, uh, learning along the way. I would say if you take like at the maturity level, one to five, I would say I am solid 2.5 or something. I want to get to that five as well. Um, so, yeah, that's where I am. Excellent. Could you actually, and uh, Supir asked a question, well, um, kind of like a follow-up question, but can you, you mentioned a lot about connecting to the charter, but can maybe you share some concrete or specific measures of KPI to measure developer productivity, you know, assuming not measuring the lines of code or number of deployments? Okay. So I attended uh, ELC recently and there was a session where they measured, measurement is important, but measurement should never be micromanagement. So that is like going to be the foundation for especially measuring here you want to measure you want to speed up your developers you want to see like where the gaps are but you need to understand the ecosystem and uh, another thing i heard is like the developer surveys uh, done by tools like dx or jelly is becoming very powerful you can definitely use uh, generic things like dora metrics uh, but if you want to start somewhere simple the simplest thing would be more than number of lines of code because with the AI code generation and other things, we don't want to measure that, of course. It should be about um, the quality of the code uh, and also how fast the code can get into deployment. And you know you can track your error budget, uh, meaning like how much of the time like that you had to stop feature development and do bug fixing. Uh, those are more powerful metrics which are not micromanagement, micromanaging metrics. And if you want to go very deep, you can also measure like, you know, PR time. This is something like a gap in a lot of companies where you want peer review to be done, but maybe peer reviews are not aware of peer review sitting in their queue. You can see like how the peer review time is done so that it can help propel the, you know, delivery to the industry faster than uh, expected. So those are like, some items that I would say which are concrete metrics, but which are also not micromanaging me metrics. But again, you have like multiple areas where you can get inputs from like Dora metrics, like going to, you know, tooling based metrics like DX or Jellyfish. Uh, you have like multiple uh, resources out there. But I would always say that, you know, understand your developer pain points, start with the survey and see what makes sense to your team. Keep it impactful, but not micromanaging. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, wonderful. So we have one last question, uh, and then we'll wrap up. Uh, this is, again, from uh, Gabriel. Uh, so imagine a very traditional organization. Uh, can you give some tips on creating a roadmap to adopt platform engineering? Um, where should they start, and what first steps should they take? Um, platform engineering is actually solving companies' problem in a product mentality. That's actually how I define, and I'm encouraging my team. I mean, our teams also came from different areas, and they're all you know transforming into platform engineering. For a traditional organization, I would 
try to understand your business i would try to understand what is your business's vision so first and foremost you need to understand your business's vision because there is no use in you know creating great cloud services if your company's vision is to stay in a data center so understand your company's vision first then the second point is once you understand that create your vision before you know starting the road map you need to know where you want to get at you want to have that you know um, end point or you know at least a perceived end point a vision and then bring your team together first document the tech depths that you currently have tell that this is my vision how can we get there just have like a ideation or a brainstorm and also as i said the first thing is your vision need to align with company vision now that that gap is bridged you have a vision bring the team together get their inputs multiple brains are always better than one brain uh, so that you can overcome the unknown bias and have like brainstorming sessions where you have the tech depths on the paper you have vision on the paper and see how you can take this to that it may need technical upskilling in the team as well so your roadmap also need to have training upskilling and also like step by step of modernization it is not going to happen in a day you need to tackle big blocks and you need to win hearts before you can bring in your roadmap into picture but that doesn't mean that you have to wait for your roadmap have your vision have your roadmap but try to win you know stakeholders simultaneously and also then say work with the stakeholders and align your roadmap with them so those are like some building blocks and how you can bring this into a traditional organization step by step it's a step by step process good luck oh my gosh I want to give you such a huge, huge thank you, Swarna, uh, for your incredible insights today and for joining us for the second episode of our platform engineering uh, mini series. Uh, I just want to reiterate, you know, for platform teams, you are, you know, you you have to be your own champion. You have to be able to communicate your values. So um, I hope these this episode provided some really great insights. And with that, I want to highlight a couple of key takeaways, such as uh, make sure to tailor your metrics, either ROI or KPI or both, as we as we talked about, to each team's focus, such as product delivery, foundational support, or cloud services. Uh, ensure your platform goals are aligned with the broader organiz organizational objectives. And you know, in a way, your platform team you know, like we said, has to be your own advocate. So consistently show how platform uh, efforts support business goals and improve decision making. And if you are inspired by today's topic and want to learn more about platform engineering, we encourage you to check out the DASA Platform Engineering Certification Program and Products uh, product suite. You can find more information on our website at dasa.org or access the direct link uh, to the product suite in the comments. So I've posted those right in the comments if you'd like to check that out. Um, thank you again for joining. Our next episode will be in October. So stay tuned. Uh, thank you again, Swarna, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks, Jess and Dasa, for giving me this opportunity. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely.